Hello, welcome back. Today I want to show you how I use ready-made rubber soles on bespoke shoes that I make. I'll show every bit of the process involved, so it's a long video. Plus, I'll also share bonus tips on how to last up the pair. So it's a long video, stick around and you might just learn something new. Welcome aboard. So as you might imagine, the process starts with having to construct the insole. Now I use insole fiberboard and I do not use metal shanks. Now when you are working with uh, already made rubber soles, you'd have to get rubber soles that matches exactly your last or very close to it. In this case, this rubber sole is the exact replica of the underneath side of my last so i make the impression of the sole on a piece of paper and use that to trace out the outline of the insole then i double it up at the back like so and use the same fiber board that i have as my shank i've never had to use metal shanks on um pre-made rubber soles and thinking about it I know bespoke traditional um, shoemakers who use wood bamboo so um, I see no reason why anything else that can add some structure and rigidity to that back area will not work as well if you happen to have any reason whatsoever why um, you think metal shanks are absolutely required put a comment in the comment session and I'll really really want to hear it and um, consider it but I've never used metal shanks and I've had shoes that I made dating back to six years five years ago and have not had any structure issues with them in spite of the fact that I use fiber um, shanks so having constructed the insole you just uh, trim it off sand out the rough edges to ensure that everything aligns with the cup of your rubber sole and then let's just do one final check yeah everything is okay so now let's get into lasting i have several videos on how to last up a pair but people keep requesting that i explain um a few things here and there so this is me doing lasting all over again and explaining it to you so the first thing you put the upper align your center lines um, to the middle of the last and then pull on that first 12 o'clock position and put a staple I have stopped using nails I'm exclusively using staples they are handy easy to work with and I just prefer them. If you're using nails, the process is the same. So I've put a staple in the 2 o'clock position. I'm going to put a staple in the 10 o'clock position. Then I'll put a staple in the 3 o'clock position. And another staple at the 9 o'clock position. Before starting this, you know that you will um, move the heel height 1 cm away from where it's supposed to be. Now, having put that 9 o'clock staple, you pull the heel height back to its position and put a staple there. So, this is the fifth staple that we're having to put. At this point, you notice that the top line is tight and snug on the last. Then I'll put a staple at this 4 o'clock. Now I'm not pulling on the upper. I just pull on the lining itself. This is how I do mine. Pull on the lining at the 4 o'clock position. And then at the 8 o'clock position. Put staples there. At this point, the shoe is pretty much perfectly lasted. If your pattern is correct. 3, 4, 5 six seven eight so those are the eight cardinal 
nails or staples you require to properly last up. Everything else here on in is just fine tuning on the lining. Um, I'm going to be removing the staples that are holding both the upper lining together and just pulling on the lining, giving it, um, you know, that extra, mm, that extra snug to give it more torque and everything just lies flush on your last no wrinkles no rumples all of this actually is dependent on having um very well made patterns if your pattern is very well made um your lasting is halfway done uh, it's easiest to last up a well made pattern you start experiencing difficulties when your pattern isn't proper so, uh, like I said, I'm just uh, releasing the upper and then, you know, tugging away, fine-tuning on the lining, having everything else in place. But if you notice, I'm working on alternate positions so that no one um, half of the shoe gets more torque than the other. So, let's just finish this up. And all that will remain will be to you know put glue in between and if you notice the staples are just at the feather edge so that my glue can really go all the way in and i'll glue that um, in place i'll glue the lining back in place so i'll pull up the upper like so tug on that back area i'm not stapling anything on this back area because of course you know this last has that metal shank um, so no point really um, stapling that part. If it didn't have that, I would have probably just stapled it and um, just have everything else snug and in place. Somebody asked me once, why do they put the metal shank there? Um, for traditional bespoke shoemakers who make things like um, traditional Blake construction or Goodyear welted construction, sometimes they like to put pegs at that back area so that metal plate there helps um, in pegging one day i'm going to do a goodyear welted shoe and i'll basically demonstrate what that pegging um does um nobody has paid me enough to make good way goodyear welted shoes so probably i'll do a christmas present for my dad goodyear welted um and just use it to demonstrate I keep learning just like everybody else <laughs> so let's uh, put this lining in place so just fine-tune everything put the lining in place and um, you know trim off all the excess just you know so that everything is neat and flush and dandy by the time you're putting on the sole you don't have any issues whatsoever so make sure you remove all of your staples especially the ones that you use to secure the insole um to the last there's no use finishing a beautiful shoe and you're not able to pull it off from the last now i'm just using my hot iron to um iron down this back part it's an optional process it's not absolutely required I'm only doing it because I have it, probably, um, just to show off that I have the hot iron. <laughs> so basically, um, it's not um, a required process. So I skive. We are at the point where we have to deal with our stiffness. So this is my toe puff. I skive up the toe puff. I use the paper fiber type of toe puff. You can also use um, vegetable tan leather, um, whatever fiber you have, as long as you know how to walk around whatever um, stiffness that you're working with. That's absolutely fine. For this pair, I'm using the um, fiber, paper fiber um, stiffness. 
so it's time to add a heel counter stiffness um, sometimes you're gonna have to put this put your back stiffness before you last in this case I chose not to do that so I pull up the upper apply my glue to the back to the counter region of the shoe and voila goes in my stiffness so just align it in place remember that I properly skived it um, one of the telltale signs of an amateur shoemaker is if people are seeing lines of your stiffness sticking out at the back of your shoe that tells that you've probably not mastered your skiving so um, you skive it down very well you put it in and then we do the same for the front part the front stiffener has also been properly skived we've applied some glue to it as well so we're going to um, put this glue on here let it sit for a while um, it sat for a while really so it's a bit dry right now so I apply the front stiffness just gently walking it into place I use my hammer to trim it out and then these ruffles here I would um, bring them down use the scissors to cut them out um, all the excess remaining parts and then all those ruffles at the top as well I use my scissors to trim them out and then you know go at them with a sandpaper just to ensure that everything is flat and flush I'll use two um, sand two types of sandpaper really the rough and the more smooth type so I'll hammer back this back stiffener part I'll go at it again with this hot iron just to ensure that everything is smooth and flush at that back region. I don't want to have any wrinkles on the shoe at that back so I just press it down with my hot iron. I'm really liking this tool. I just got it off AliExpress. Um, if you want it, look it up. It's on AliExpress. Um, it's a really handy tool and um, it makes your life easier. So like I said earlier on, I'll go at it with the rough sandpaper, just lightly um, sanding off the ridges and um, fallows that we have. Then I go at it with the K263 sandpaper and you know, just give it that extra smoothing. It's kind of like you're trying to panel beat your car. So you're trying to repaint your car so you're gonna to have to like sand out all the bumps then I would use the white wood bond um, that's a professional shoemaker's paste which is basically starch I think it's called Harris Kleber is a German product I've not happened to um, I've not been able to access it anywhere in Nigeria and I'm definitely not going to be importing it knowing what the exchange rates are this white top bond wood um, wood workers based works exactly the same they are all starch based um, pastes and they dry out clear and not water soluble when they dry so it makes absolute sense the physics behind it um, works absolutely well for me so I'll pull back everything in place pull back my up in place and then just go at it again with the same lasting procedure 12 o'clock 2 o'clock um, um, 12 o'clock 2 o'clock 3 o'clock 9 o'clock and then have everything back in place so yeah um, everything is well lasted right now and I held it back with stipples, stipples so that um, the wood bond can dry out. So this is overnight. I left it overnight and right now it's dry. So I'm going to have to 
close up this i've applied contact cement on the underside however so close it up small pleats are what you need at this heel area and also at the toe areas of course so you hammer it in place and at this toe area small pleats once again just go at it small pleats after small pleats working your way gradually ensuring that you don't have any rumples or wrinkles sticking out into the beyond the feather edge so everything is flush and dandy i hammer it down in place hammer it like i'm crazy <laughs> hammer it like it stole something from me so you see what i was talking to you about because of the skiving around the back and on the um the two puff there are no lines whatsoever sticking out um on the upper so i will skive this upper region down right now do the same for the heel area as well and then now add um, an extra piece of leather to cover out that uh, exposed insole board right there so that everything is fine and flush and I have a flat surface on which I can now attach my sole before then I would um, go at this with a rough sandpaper just roughen up the underneath in preparation for attachment of our rubber soles. So just roughen it up like you're about to go crazy. <laughs> roughen it up, roughen it up, roughen it up. Roughen it up, roughen it up. It's absolutely important that you roughen up both the underside of your shoe and also the underside of the rubber sole itself. I had previously done it on the rubber sole um, to save time. I did it off camera. So I would use this piece of paper to trace out um, a pattern of the exposed underside right there. You could use cotton wool to cover this. You could use EVA, what they call Mako. You could use cork if you can lay your hands on it. So, whatever, I'm going to use leather for my, in my own case. Then, of course, you add contact cement. You could use the PU adhesive, but contact cement also works very well. All you need to do is to leave it to dry for 15 to 20 minutes. So, I'm going to be covering that with leather, like I mentioned earlier. So cover it up and ensure that there are no bumps. In fact, you may have to go at it and skive out the edges like I'm doing right now. Just skive out the edges so that you don't have bumps sticking underneath the sole. Then put your contact cement all over this thing. Making sure that no glue seeps beyond the feather edge. So just uh, glue it up and remember it's absolutely important to leave it to dry. In fact, I know shoemakers who leave it overnight and that's not too much. So I'm going to attach the sole. I'm sorry that my camera is a bit off, out of focus. I didn't realize I was out of focus, but just attach it and hammer it um, down very well. If you have a press, this is also the time to use a press to press it down. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end product of what we've been working on. I hope you enjoyed it. We always say if you have questions and comments or observations, put it in the comments. And if you like content like this, subscribe to our channel. See you on the next one.